The story of hand blowing glassware starts here. A furnace with 1,500 degrees Celsius. Materials melt and fuse after the baptism fire, making glasses similar to wool choosing gum. Workers blow the molten glass into bubbles and mold them into various shapes. After being cut off, they are delicately cut, polished, engraved, painted, and even gilded in traditional Chinese, European, and Arab styles. In the Qing Dynasty, the renowned Qixian merchant sold tea to Europe and brought back the hand-blown glassmaking technology from the Czech and Italian craftsmen. Now, hand-blown glassware made in Qixian accounts for 45% of China's output and 26% of the global output. It has been exported to more than 80 countries and regions. Last year, the output of a total of 50 glassware makers in the county hit 2.3 billion RMB or 340 million US dollars, with exports accounting for 70%. The industry also grants more than 20,000 local jobs, nearly one-tenth of the county's total population. Each enterprise has its tailored business strategy for glassware making company Honghai, which literally means Red Sea in Chinese. The Middle East countries are one of the major export destinations, while Dahua had sold its products to IKEA, Sainsbury's, Merck & Spencer, Macy's, and other retail store chains in Europe and North America. Some companies like Dongyu have shifted their emphasis to the domestic market by developing products for high-end hotels and restaurants. But it's always a bumpy road to grow big and strong. The industry which had weathered the global financial crisis in 2008, uprisings in the Arab countries, and the U.S.-China trade conflict now faces stern challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and geopolitical conflicts. Since last year, we have undergone a rise in the prices of raw materials, energy, freight and employees' wages. The outbreak of conflict between Russia and Ukraine has slashed orders from Russian and European markets, and the trend has not turned around yet. Logistics were bottlenecked, especially in March and April. Instead of taking a wait-and-see approach, the industry has taken proactive measures to accumulate strength and boost the sales. We actively contacted customers and developed new products. Because a weak market does not mean the demand vanishes. Customers instead are in search of different products. Our design and development team has developed a new series of products over the past months. They have not made debut, but are laying a foundation for the explosive growth after the pandemic situation eases. We took the initiative to make VR videos of our products and sent VR links to our customers. The local government is offering multi-pronged support to make the industry tide over difficulties and achieve a sound development in the long run. The Qixian Rural and Commercial Bank has responded to the calls of the provincial government and deferred the payment of interest of loans to three months from one month. It helps a lot. The small and medium-sized enterprise service center of the county now increases the amount of guarantee from 5 million yuan to 30 million yuan. Under the guidance of the government, the county's vocational school has opened courses of glassware making, artistic design, and materials to supplement talent. After suffering from a slump in sales in the first four months, the industry began to rebound in May. Customers in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait have resumed ordering our products. Prices of raw materials have fallen to a reasonable range. After the Racial Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, took effect at the beginning of this year, Li has been heartened that the decrease of duty fees will allow more glassware products to enter the ASEAN countries. Indonesia, Singapore and Malaysia are also our main markets. Now we enjoy very favorable tariffs thanks to the RCEP. We are actively in contact with the customs to apply certificate of origin in accordance to our products for different countries so as to enjoy such good trade policies. In the first five months of 2022, Chinese exports grew 11.4% year-on-year despite headwinds. China's trade with Belt Road countries jumped at 16.8% year-on-year. 
as a government policy package to stabilize the economy while containing COVID-19 resurgences started to pay off, more confidence had been shored up. The road is tortuous, but the future is bright. We have to squarely face all hardships. In light of victory that we have won in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic over the past two years, I believe we will soon overcome the arduousness. We've introduced production lines from Schott AG, a German glassmaker, which will be soon installed and tested to boost production capacity. Small and medium-sized enterprises are very dynamic in innovation and entrepreneurship. New driving forces are constantly being forged and growing. China's economy can surely achieve medium and high-speed growth in a sustained way. The Chinese economy has been integrated into the world economy. Instead of sailing on a calm sea, we have set off a long expedition on wavy waters. Only in this way can our company forge a winning team capable of the ocean-going voyage.